has become so much more than this in the intervening year. Pioneer is a virtual, but also very real community of like-minded orthopedists striving to help not only themselves, but one another. With the latest video conferencing and educational technology, as well as a groundbreaking online platform, SICOT's Pioneer events, activities, and resources are reaching every corner of the globe, with over 55,000 views of our webinars so far. We're forging new partnerships, signing agreements with 12 other international academic societies, and building an enduring network we hope will last for many years to come. So, what can you expect from us? Free webinars led by key opinion leaders from around the world and across all fields of orthopedic surgery and traumatology, as well as chat shows with some of the most interesting and inspiring surgeons on the planet. Opportunities to take an interactive role in these webinars by participating in polls and live discussions. Free on-demand Pioneer playback service. Watch our webinars again and again in your own time. And coming soon, our new bespoke learning management system will host podcasts, an online version of the famous SICOT diploma exam, virtual training modules, surgical technique courses, a discussion forum, and much, much more. We hope you'll join us on this pioneering journey as we push the boundaries of what is possible in online orthopedic education together. Hello, hello everyone all around the world. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, because people from all around the world are actually looking at this webinar. Uh, my name is Oliver Marin. I am from Madrid, Spain, and it's my pleasure to present this first uh, HIP webinar just organized by the HIP subcommittee of CCOT. So thank you so much for everyone who has connected to this webinar. I would like to present my co-moderator in this webinar and vice chair of the HIP subcommittee, Satish. Good afternoon, Satish. Thank you, Oliver. And uh, we are going to present just very quickly what we are going to see during the next 45 minutes. So this webinar is part of a series of webinars that have been called 360 degrees BHI view from preserving to revision total hyperthroplasty. And these four webinars will be developed during this year before our secret meeting in Cairo. And these are the dates and the topics. We will start today, this Thursday, because every web webinar will be on Thursday at that time, 6 p.m. here in Central Europe. And this is the first webinar that has been called My Wars Complication After Total Hyperthroplasty. For sure, we have to start with this topic because it's very popular. I know that everybody wants to know the complications of other surgeons, not our own complications. So we will start with this worst complication after total hip, and we will have designed a case-based webinar that have been moderated by Satis Cardi from the UK and me from Spain. And we have choose three couples of speakers, one for every case of these three cases, the first two will be a presenter from India, Mirnal Sharma. And the facilitator will be Fares Haddad from UK. Hello, Mirnal and Fares. Thank you so much for collaborating with us in this webinar. The topic of this webinar you will see later, but the second couple will be Nico Restrepo from Colombia and Thorsten Gerbke from Germany. 
Thank you so much, Nico and Thorsten, for staying here. And we will finish with Pablo Slutitel and Luigi Sagra, Pablo from Argentina and Luigi from Italy. Thank you so much, both. And please don't fight about football. I know that you have a different opinion about the last World Championship with Argentina and Italy. So let's talk about the case, please. And um, I would like to thank you, Sico, for this Sico Pioneer uh, webinars that last year was so successful. And especially Vika Scanduja, Go, and Philippe Hernigu for the support to our committee to organize these webinars. So these are the three cases. The first one will be about hip arthroplasty instability, as I told you before, presented by Mirna and facilitated or as facilitator by Fares. The second case will be total hip arthroplasty infection, great topic, will be presented by Nico Restrepo from Colombia, and the facilitator will be Thorsten Gierke. And the final one will be total hip arthroplasty in a peri periprosthetic fracture situation, presented by Pablo Little from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, and Luigi Sagra from Italy. And just say thank you so much to everyone who collaborated to start organizing this, this webinar and the participant and attendees for uh, stay there at this time. And please ask questions through the uh, secret platform. Please also participate in the voting system because you will have three questions in every case to reply, to answer, and to, to, to give your opinion. And we will try to get you involved in every case. So just I will stop here and, and give the, 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 the presentation of the first case to my co-moderator, Satish. Satish, please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, our first case is going to be presented by Mrinal and it's going to be challenged and man managed by uh, Faris. So on to you, Mrinal. Thank you, Sikot. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, um, Satish for giving me this opportunity and a very good evening to all the fellow faculty who've uh, joined here. So I'll be presenting my case on instability in total apartheplasty and thanks to Dr. Ferris to moderate the case. Uh, my worst complication, I am working in this hospital, which is a 2600 bedded hospital in Delhi NCR in India. It's the largest hospital in India and uh, with state of the art equipment and robotic surgery available. So I have no disclosures to make. Uh, I'll start with my case. She is a 38 year female. She was a known case of rheumatoid arthritis since 1995. You share your screen. We can't see your screen. You can't see? No. I think I've already shared. Can you see now? Yes. Okay. All oh, good. I good. Go for go? it. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. We can see. Yeah. Okay. So she is a 30 year female, known case of rheumatoid arthritis on demand since 1995 and presented with pain and limp on the right side. She was operated for a total hepatoplasty on the right hip and the this procedure was done in 2009. I unfortunately do not have those first x-rays of the, uh, the index procedure before uh, what was the actual situation of the hip when she got the total hip done. And she started having pain in 2012. On evaluation, uh, the CBC, ESR, and CRP were within normal limits to rule out infection. And um, these were her pre-operative x-rays when she came to me. She has been operated three, four times uh, outside. So these are x-rays which were available with her. So I would like to know on the audience, from the audience, uh, what went wrong here? Uh, there's a high hip center. The cup is vertical. The acetabular bone stock was not restored. All of the above or none of the above? So, Dr. Ferris. So, so Mira, while, you're, while, while people are voting, uh, just some, some quick questions here. Are, are, are you satisfied in a multiply operated hip? I know infection is not our topic, but if the blood numbers are normal, you just go ahead or would you aspirate this hip before you go ahead? I would still aspirate and probably today I would do ultrasonic uh, guided aspiration of the hip, even if the ESRCRP are normal. All righty. And uh, in terms of uh, previous operations, do we have any idea if they started with the cup at the right level and it migrated up or do we not know anything other than the cup is sitting where it is now? 
what what the patient uh, told me was that after the surgery she had been uh, walking pretty well and she did not have limp also and she was pain free uh, for a considerable time but then it started to fail and i we can see probably the cup is migrating proximally and it's also eating onto the acetabular bone stock and what was her leg length like uh, she had a shortening of around 3 uh, to 4 cm okay very good so i think we'll get uh, hopefully get the voting in a second because this clearly is a scenario where something needs to be done now depending on your resources you might investigate this further did you get any other imaging beyond this obviously we won't be showing that today but uh, what what other imaging did you get so she was revised somewhere else so at that time uh, i don't know if they did a ct scan i would obviously advise for a ct scan to know how much is the bone stock and uh, to classify according to the proposky defects and then plan accordingly whether i need bone grafts whether i need augments or you know what kind of uh, implants i would require for the revision and i would also like to go and see in the ct scans about my uh, version of the stem as well yeah no no it must be important must not forget the stem here that's a really important thing because it looks like a well fixed stem so our audience is clearly quite experienced because most of them went for all of the above 82% and the others were divided between the first 3 so i think uh, everybody's on to it that there's a problem here so we we better keep moving uh, before our chairman tells us off so uh, she had shortening of almost 5 cm painful range of motion when she came and the distal neurovascular was intact and this is the revision which was done in 2015 uh, on her somewhere else and you they probably bone grafted and used a cup a revision cup with a large diameter head uh, but um, i would like you to comment upon the revision which was done there so 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 clearly uh, they've left the stem in by the look of things uh, i didn't see the stem in this profile before but uh, they've grafted the cup but i uh, would be wary of how much true native bone hold this cup has got and how good the fixation is so i think you would still be extremely concerned that this cup still not at the right level and that it hasn't got a very good grip so high risk situation still looking back at the defect before this the cup was in high and out so i i suspect we need a bit more of a hold than they've got at the moment yeah i i surely agree to that and i think that the grafting is inadequate the cup is little higher from the hip center and it's little vertical also Uh, they did uh, put in a large diameter head which would have been a saving grace but unfortunately it didn't work for a long time and let's see what we have here so by 2017 she failed again and she kept on walking with the little bit pain she had and again she comes back to me with these kind of x rays and uh, this is an x ray in october you can see that the cup is rotated it is loose completely and she is walking and uh, on to the Uh, and the the cup is eating onto the acetabular bone, and on the CTs also you can see that there's a thin rim of a bone which is available superiorly as well as medially, and there is almost uh, no posterior. Uh, you know, the acetabular walls are not there, so that's what the CTs uh, I got them done at that time. This is when the patient came to me actually. I know. Well, that's a pleasant challenge. So a big reconstruction to do. Still, we will assume for today that she's not infected. and therefore it's a question of how you are going to restore cup position and uh, restore bone if you could or at least get fixation in this big proximally migrated uh, cavity so when she came to me i did the aspiration and the blood counts were normal and aspiration also came out to be negative and there were uh, no signs intraoperatively also of any kind of infection or you know any tissue which would be suspicious of infection still i do usually during revision send the histopathology uh and check for any neutrophil or neutrophils in the sections uh so should i move ahead yeah let's see what you did uh d- did you d- so, did you have a plan for the femur so actually um i thought that the femur is in a good position uh in the ct scan also although a bit towards the neutral side and not uh, quite good uh, in a good anti version uh still my more focus was on you know reconstructing the acetabular defect which was a big problem for me uh, so what should have been done uh, let's have an audience poll first whether you revise with the jumbo cup you revise with the acetabular augments and poro porous coated revision cups you revise to a dual mobility and a constrained cup or you revise to custom flange cup or none of the above good question and fairly sophisticated one 
to answer. Do, do you, I, I presume at the time you had access to all of these options? No, I did not have access to the custom plans cups. Yeah, no, no. I mean, that's a. It, it's an interesting scenario now because it's something that's increasingly being used worldwide. Although there is a danger we're going to end up using too many custom tri flanges and lose the art of the reconstruction. Some of us enjoy using augments and cup cages. Others find it more challenging. So I think it's 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 uh, it's important not to lose that skill set and also the ability to do something intraoperatively rather than have to plan it several several weeks ahead. So, so your plan was to keep that stem, I assume. Did you worry about, by restoring the center of rotation down, that that femur would be very tight? Or was that not an issue? I, I had to do some releases, uh, obviously, and it was a little difficult for me to get it down, but uh, uh, I could manage to do that. Um, the the only uh, thing what I could not get was a custom flange cup in my, uh, my setting, and uh, uh, probably custom flange cup would also would need placement on the high ilium in this case and you know because it's uh, proximally migrated with a lot of defect so all i could get was some allografts to reconstruct the defect and um, that is what i've done if we can discuss the audience poll and move ahead yeah i'm just waiting to see the audience poll results you know uh, sikot are very very wary of sharing that kind of information so hopefully they'll give them to us in a second so jumbo cups was zero Acetabular augments with poro coat and revision 69%. That makes me feel happy. People are thinking about augments still. Uh, people are thinking about stability too. To, so 13% wanted dual mobility, although of course that's not mutually exclusive. And 19%, one in five were thinking of a custom triflange that you didn't have access to. So important here, takeaways from this section is you've got to get reconstruction and get stability. So show us what you did. So this is when I opened up a lot of metallosis and there was a huge defect in the ileum. And I actually put in three femoral allografts, which I could procure from some other hospital and fix them with screws, cannulated screws into the residual bone, whatever I had. Then put in the acetabulum, uh, the highly porous coated uh, cup uh, with the multiple screws and did the reconstruction. I retained the stem. So, um, and this is what I did. So I could fill up all the bone defect uh, with three femoral heads and impaction grafting and did a fixation here. Yeah, un un unusual in this day and age to still have that skill to bone graft, but clearly that's very nicely done in terms of bringing the the uh, the hip out to length. She looks longer on the right side. Was she longer now? Uh, she's a little bit more, maybe, but um, I could uh, get intraoperative stability. So that was the main thing which I, you know, I was able to get. Uh, I did not use any kind of other constraint or um, uh, by a dual mobility cup in this patient. Very good. So what happens then? So this is October 2017 and she dislocates in a month. And we take her to the OR and we do an open reduction. And again, on table, I find that it is pretty stable and I'm not able to find out the reason. Uh, why is it, uh, why did it dislocate? So maybe some kind of trivial fall, which she did not tell me, or maybe um, she did something awkward within, because it dislocated only within a month. So I, we reduced it and it was on table stable and we sent her home. And then she comes back in April, uh, 2018. You know, she sends an x-ray and she's doing fine. And then uh, that's the follow-up x-ray. Uh, she is uh, a national from another country. So she's kept sending me x-rays on the follow-ups. So audience poll, what should be done? This is how she presents to me, uh, sends me the x-rays in July, 2018 from her country. So she is dislocated another time. Uh, should we revise to a constraint cup? We should, should I revise to dual mobility? Revise to the whole of the fee, uh, the acetabulum to a custom flange cup, revise both cup and stem or none of the above. So let's give the audience a second to think about that. But just tell us the, the first instability. You said you did an open reduction. Would it not go in closed? And no, it was not going closed. That's fascinating. That's uh, that's really and one one technical question for you. That this cup, in spite of the very big bulk allograph there, you've put it in without screws. You managed to get a really good fit, presumably. I actually, um, I was able to get a fit, but there was some probably defect on the superior side. So I've used some cement also to uh, guide that, to support that. But since on the middle side, the rim of bone was so, so soft that the screws were not holding. So I did not put in the screws. 
Because we were tip- we would typically try and put any screws we could in, and particularly in this sort of situation, get some inferior screws in. But uh, you know, you've done you've done very well, and the cup has clearly held on from that perspective. So let's uh, let's maybe get the guys to get us back to the audience and see what the audience wanted to do in a multiply revised, uh, multiply dislocated hip. We haven't talked about why we're looking for the results. What approaches were used, and how? What were the abductors like? See, the, uh, uh, the previous incision was a posterior approach and I'm a posterior approach surgeon. All the time I used the same approach and even the previous surgeon had used the posterior approach only again and again. Obviously, the, uh, the abductors were, uh, were not too healthy. They were a little fibrous, and um, but they were there. They were not lost. So, the, the, the only issue what I found out was that when I had to graft it, so I had to do some, uh, you know, undermining of the abductors from the ileum to make space for the graft to fill in there. Well, I mean, so, the, the, you've also stretched it down quite a long way to get it back in. So presumably the abductors maybe took a bit of a beating then. So our audience yeah. is interesting. They, uh, just to let you know, I don't know if you can see this, Manal, they've 64% want to do dual mobility. They all love your Balcala graft. So nobody wants a custom uh, tri-flange. 21% want to put a, a constrained cup in and 14% just want to go back and revise both the cup and the stem because they haven't enjoyed our presentation. So uh, uh, keep keep going. Let's uh, see what, what happens next. So can, can I have a comment on this uh, X-ray of the lateral view of the stem? Do you feel it is a n- neutral version uh, and it should have so, been addressed at that time? So it's, it's, I mean, that was one of my questions early on. You've always got to be wary of that. And although it's the difficult part, is revising the femur, you're doing a big ass type of reconstruction. If it's a neutral or retroversion, you should be thinking about it uh, from that perspective. I think it's tough to tell, but on that x-ray, of course, it does look neutral, but uh, tricky to tell on a lateral x-ray. CT is much better. We've got less than a minute left, Marina, so better keep going. Okay. And uh, Yeah. So this is what I did. I revised her with a uh, cemented dual mobility from Evolutus, and uh, she's doing fine till then. I haven't heard from her till now, and she's walking well. And uh, the stem has not been revised. So the take home message is restore the bone stock, restore the hip biomechanics, use a dual mobility or a constrained cup in abductor insufficiency, and consider complete revision of the cup and stem if the stem is in neutral or a retroversion with uh, recurrent instabilities. And a custom flange cup, if if you have access to that, should be used in such a scenario uh, rather than using allografts, which I used so many years ago because I didn't have a custom flange cup available at that time. Thank you. Uh, well, well done. And if I could add to finish that you need to think about both fixation and stability. So well done for for achieving both. Thank you. Thank you. Should I stop sharing? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Ferris. Thank you. Thank you for this fantastic uh, case. Uh, let's move to the next one. Nico Restrepo uh, from Colombia will present a very easy case about total hip infection and the facilitator will be Thorsten Gerke from Germany. So two great friends, at least before this case. Let's see what happened. Go ahead, please, Nicole. (laughs) Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Thorsten. Do you hear me? Yeah, very well. Yeah, it's a case presentation. We don't have disclosures. And this case, what operator uh, the first time in Ecuador is a 50 years female with dysplastic hip. It's seven years ago and three years later, begin with pain, swelling, no fistula, but uh, it's, you know, losing. Uh, this is the first uh, question for the audience poll. Uh, should you be a rule out or aseptic losing or is clearly an aseptic losing? A, no clearly aseptic. B, I prefer to use ESR only or CRP only. B, ESR, CRP or E, all of the above plus joint aspiration. Uh, could you tell us something about the uh, Thorsen? So it's a great, I mean, it's a great question uh, on all these cases, which are, which have problems longer than five years, because there is uh, not a consensus, but a worldwide, the majority of the surgeons are saying worldwide, after five years, it could not be infected at all. It's just a mechanical problem. It's an aseptic problem. And 
I like the questions very much, um, and we will see what the what the audience is polling because we have a clear opinion about it. And I guess you as well, Nico. Um, yeah. Interesting that you mentioned it was done in Ecuador and not in Colombia. Um, yeah, I, I used to go to Ecuador to do the heat difficult cases. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And so what is your call to recommendation? Poll. Let's wait for the poll results, please. Yeah. One I, second. I'm, this is the poll results. Uh, should, should come yeah. in a second. Some, some cases, this plastic heaps and difficult revision probably go. Yeah. It's clearly septic, 0%, uh, with CSR 0, and probably ESR, CRP, 21%, uh, ESR, CRP, and John aspiration, 79%. Uh, do you prefer to do an aspiration? Or what is your call to recommendation? So in, in our, yeah, of course. In our institution, um, it is a clear indication. Uh, every every joint which has to be revised will be aspirated in our institution in the end of cleaning in Hamburg. How is it in your institution, in your hospital? Do you aspirate any revision before you revise or any problem before you revise the joint? Right now that you are my friend, I try to do all the same like in the clinic, but five years, say six years ago, probably, I only aspirate at 20, 30 percent, and we only have uh, the 60, 58 percent of positive cultures. It's a big difference, and it, for me, it's a big difference to do a punction in a pediatric uh, hemoculture and uh, stay for more than 10 days. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, that's a great recommendation. Uh, you already, You already mentioned it. We should send it. If we cannot send it very quickly uh, to the lab in, in, in a native manner, we should use pediatric culture bottles and we should culture it at least, as you said, 10 to 14 days. And that's a very, very important uh, take home message. And yeah, go on, please. Excellent. Mm -hmm. What happened right now? Nico. It's not working right now. Yeah. It's not clear why they did an acetabular revision three, after, three years after surgery. I don't know if it's or not infected, but it continued with pain. And one year later, it begins with this fistula, swelling, pain, edema, and look at the, and the hip. Uh, this is the audience poll, the second audience poll. Uh, they start with empirical antibiotic and only partial component revision now. It's, it's an, a good idea. I refer to the patient to another surgeon. Yeah, they refer to me. <laughs> and this would be a great option. D, not the best option. And E, never do it without the first remove antibiotic for two weeks and new aspiration and culture. So it's, yeah. do you have some, some questions, uh, some uh, points about the, the is it the disruption or it's not it's disrupted or do you need something more? So I, I think we have two 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 issues here. We have a uh, high suspicion of infection, of course, and we have a huge um, bone defect. So, Nico, how let's go to the bone defect. How would you classify this defect? Uh, I I classified when I saw in this that it would be a possible disruption, uh, an acetabular disruption. Uh, 3 B and C probably uh, is, is a huge is a huge defect. But uh, I talked with my the surgeon and say that I need uh, more 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 images and I prefer a, a, a CT scan uh, to to know well. Let's see the poll. That would be would, that would be my next question. Would you would you order a, C, uh, a CT and um, I yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult in 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 this moment uh, to have a, a CT scan with uh, metal subtractions in in this part of the country. Uh, uh, it would be difficult. So I I did uh, uh, a normal CT scan. You did a normal CT scan. I think it's not. Yeah, 
what what do you like to see in the CT? Why why are you doing the CT? What's the reason? Uh, I I like to know if it's a real disruption and what is the bone stock that I have. Uh, I'm gonna talk to let it. I, let's see the poll. Uh, not the best option, 21%, and never without uh, first removing the antibiotic is 64%. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important that you uh, uh, have the uh, all the, the intention with the uh, uh, emergency uh, rooms and the uh, external, external offices that they uh, don't go with antibiotics for 15 days to take to better the the possibility of, of a culture, a good germ. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, go on. What have yeah. you done? This is the, the, the CT scan, and they asked for advice. As I told you, I put uh, without antibiotics 15 days, function and culture about the fistula and in pediatric, and it was the ASR in 116, uh, 16, CRP 37. The synovial testing with blood set count the 12,000 12, with 80% of posi, uh, uh, polymorphonucleus and the culture was as an acinetobacter. Okay, yeah. Nico, which algorithm, let, let's go back, which algorithm do you use here? So in, in your daily practice, which kind of algorithm to or definition uh, for periphysetic joint infection do you use in your hospital? I write, uh, use uh, ESR, PCR, uh, we don't have, uh, we don't have, uh, we, we use uh, the punction and use leucosteras. We don't have, we have a D dimer, but we don't know how a synovia sure uh, testing. Uh, but I use these ones. I use yeah. ESR, okay. CRP, and I try to punction a uh, guided, uh, what they call by ultrasonography, uh, punction and take the leucosteras and do the synovial testing. So the question is, I mean, the, the, the peripheral joint infection here is, I would say, it's say, it's clear. So yeah. we have a high ESR, high CRP, the cutoff of the white blood cell counts is usually 3,000, PMN82 is just over the cutoff, and you even, you even detected the germ, Akinotobacter, yeah. which is a horrible germ. So go on. Yeah, it's it's horrible. So I prefer the infected revision and I gonna talk to you. Uh, it's as an escape, uh, an escape germ. Uh, you prefer one stage, two stages, no revisions. How many escape uh, germs did you know in endoclinic? Because you are one stage. To be honest, <laughs> we, uh, here you have, you, you mentioned here, you mentioned two really, really bad germs in the escape. One is Achenodobacter baumannii, which is highly, highly resistant usually. And secondly, Enterococcus fecalis, which uh, are really, really dangerous germs. And to be honest, in our institution where we are going usually for one-stage exchange, in those both germs, Achenodobacter baumannii and Enterococci, we go for a two-stage. What have you done? Perfect. I prefer the same two stages, and they did it in a color. They did me to collaborate, but it's I think it was easy. And they put in I'm APNM six weeks and refined since uh, three months. And the revision creates more femoral destructions. Put an AB loaded spacer with uh, six, uh, the, uh, six the grams. Nico, Nico one more question back. Go, go back, please. Did you did you do? I mean, did you give the patient uh, rifampicin as a single therapy or did you combine it with imipinine? They combine okay, uh, in, in all the scape, in all the scape, in all the scape uh, germs, I use the, the specific uh, antibiotic plus rifampicin uh, uh, because okay. it's the, the to, lo to, uh, to, to uh, try to destroy the biofilm, not to okay. cover it. Yeah, they put in this this stage uh, this spacer. Uh, we don't have time to discuss about the articulate spacer. I I would like to know to talk about you the endo spacer that is is a good it's a good thing. You, you can talk a little bit about this endo spacer. You prefer your endo spacer? 
So we we prefer our endospace as the articulated spacer. Yeah. And we are planning our second stage. These are the images in the CT scan. In order to move a little bit fast, uh, these are at four months. I prefer to, a new punction with skin is good, no fistula, and these are the SR good, good well, the CRP well, the synovial testing, uh, the same, the white set cones, the antiporin morphonuclears, and the culture was negative. Mm -hmm. What is the audience polls? What will be your treatment ch uh, choice now? A, a jumbo cup. B, a revision cup with porous metal augments, arthro distraction, a D, a cup cage, or an knee, a custom made as a tabular component. We can go so back to see you, the, yeah. or, during, or, or during the images. The, during the polling, I asked you two questions. Um, first of all, um, the interval of four months is, uh, is quite long. Do you have any specific reasons for it? Uh, usually it's about six to eight weeks. Um, no, the, the, the reason is that uh, this this surgery I will go not perform in Colombia. I prefer to do it, and we have to uh, wait a little bit for the uh, all the implants and all the the, the problems and uh, all the security the the security don't works here in Colombia from Ecuador, and we have to uh, wait a little bit more. That's the question. Be, because I, these patients, I put on vacation three months only, and they have one month in vacations, and that's the reason I prefer to do aspiration and okay. and have it. Ah, yeah. So it is your. I mean, do you always perform an aspiration before reimplantation? No, not always. Uh, probably in my case, it's only uh, thirty percent. Always in always in escape germs. Uh, and I I try uh, until one year because I use a, a frozen a frozen a frozen section in in the OR, but our pathologies uh, okay. unfortunately dies, and we don't have another uh, pathologies. Yeah, we, unfortunately, we just have one minute left. So the po the yeah. polling was, as you can see here, the the majority of the auditorium would solves this case with a revision cup and porous metal augments, 62%. What have you done? Yeah. Uh, I prefer to do a custom-made acetabulum because I have my dogs in the massive acetabular destruction. Uh, uh, the, the, if the disruption heal and the stupenic bone, and I prefer to do it in this way, uh, they do it, and, and I have the problem of the femoral component that begins to to lose the proximal part and I do the same surgical technique with incision cultures in order of the time this is I put uh, only grafts uh, uh, plus antibiotics uh, and I do it my custom made put it, this is the spacer the cut spacer I uh, try to preserve the, the proximal part uh, this is a distal protective circlage, and finally, with a uh, dual mobility cup mm, uh, cemented on the custom made cup. Uh, another problem, the periprosthetic fractures. Finally, when I reduce it, it's better to be prepared, and that's the final, final uh, problem. And the patient walking. Do you, what do you prefer, Thorsten? Do you use I a mean, custom made or do you prefer the, the uh, other? In this case, I would prefer a custom made one as you. So I must say, Oliver gives us some pressure. It was a wonderful case, great case, um, well, well done and um, fantastic. Thank you so much, Nico. Thank you, Thorsten, very well. The take home measures, if you have time, every losing, we have to suspect infection. Take the measures to make an accurate diagnosis. The consensus give us some topics, some points to be accurate to do the diagnostic, try to identify the germ, it's better to decide if one or two stages. The bone defect classification will be greater after surgery, even more in PG1, and we prepare uh, at the OR to rule out possible complications. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you, Nico. Thank you. Great case.
Thank you both. Thank you both. And then uh, please yes. don't share the screen, Nico, for the next speaker. Can you stop sharing the screen? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Satis, can you yes. present the yes. last case, please? Last but not the least, uh, we're now going to periprosthetic fracture uh, a case, and that's going to be presented by Pablo Sluncil from Argentina, and Luigi Zagra is going to moderate that case. Pablo, the, the floor is yours. Nico, can you stop uh, sharing, sharing the screen, yeah. please? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Ready? Well, thank you and uh, good afternoon to everybody and uh, thanks for uh, CICOT for the invitation for the organ to the organizers and also to the great faculty that we have here this afternoon or morning, depends on where you are. I'm going to present a simple case here uh, operated in Argentina at uh, Hospital Italiano Buenos Aires. So this was a lady. 83-year-old uh, lady that in 2014, uh, she had this x-ray showing a right total hip arthroplasty that was operating 13 years uh, before uh, she appeared uh, the first time here. Uh, she was operated elsewhere with this national Argentinian stem, which is kind of a copy of an AML cemented stem or uh, similar, but did they say, I'm not sure if this is polished or not. And then uh, May 2014, she had this periprosthetic fracture. She had a fall from a standing height after suffering a stroke. She had a hemorrhagic stroke. It was not huge, but she required a decompressive craniotomy. So these are the x-rays that you can see here, Dr. Zagra and uh, the rest of the audience. And uh, this would be my first question. So what would be your treatment? Would this be conservative? Would you indicate an external fixation given the clinical situation of the patient? Plating, revision with cement and cement technique, which is kind of much more a modern indication uh, uh, with or without osteosynthesis, or you would go for a full revision? So Pablo, the stem is polished, you mentioned before. Is that correct? It looks polished. It, it looks, looks polished. polished. And it's cemented stem. And it is a cement stem. Yeah. Okay. Of course, your question makes a major difference, the general condition of the patient. It may be that in a different condition, you can have different options for such a case. Yes. Sorry. Stay there and we can see the pole. Yes, I'm not able to see the chat uh, here, Dr. Sagra, if you want to say the results. No, I, the I, poll, will, I will, I will. Uh, I'm sorry. waiting for the poll results. Okay. Uh, and, and, yes. and Pablo, doesn't, how, doesn't, how, yeah. how, how, how long time were you able to operate the patient after the trauma? Uh, so I, I wasn't the, the index surgeon of this case. I operated yeah. on the complication of the complication later. Uh, okay. But apparently, taking a look at the clinical history, she was operated on a week or 10 days okay. after the fall. So a week, 10 days after the trauma, she was able, even with the hemorrhagic problem, to it, be operated well, on. She, she had a partial okay from uh, the anesthetists. Okay. Uh, she, 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 it was a borderline case. It was not a huge uh, hemorrhagic stroke. Okay. But the thing here is damage control or uh, early total care. Okay. Interesting results by the poll. We had no one will go for a conservative treatment, even in a, a, a severe general problem. There were some that uh, uh, proposed uh, an XFX also, not so many, but there are. Mm -hmm. Some plating, 23%. 8% uh, proposed a revision cement in cement and osteosynthesis. 54% so the majority a revision with the distally fixed them. What happened? What was the treatment, Pablo? So, so this was a treatment. The stem didn't look uh, with much subsidence at that time. And the surgical team decided to go for a minimally invasive plate osteosynthesis, just a quick surgery to stabilize the fracture considering the clinical status of the patient. 
Uh, I included the option of uh, cement and cement with or without osteosynthesis, given it was recently published uh, by the uh, people from Exeter, Timperley and colleagues. At uh, It's a paper published at the BJJ. You can take a look at the paper uh, at the journal, but uh, it's not something that we we would have done at that time, but I include that as an option. Uh, it's an so option, this was not, not very popular outside this center, to be honest, and not very popular worldwide. <laughs> But it's an option, of course, it is. So this was, uh, and you can see the percutaneous approaches over there. Uh, and the problem comes, starts here. Because the, the patient survived. The problem is survived. that she survived. This is the problem. The problem is that she survived. So this, this is Lucky. a love story, a love story that starts today. Uh, uh, so a few months later, it was apparent healing, apparent healing in this x-ray, but... She had a blunt, low, new, low energy trauma and she dislocated. There was a close reduction. So this is December. Now it's no, February. Problem, stay, stay, stop, 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 stop. What is your opinion for a dislocation in such a case? So uh, we sometimes see that when a stem is loose and uh, uh, it usually but the, turns. The stem is loose here for you? Well, is the stem loose? It, to me, it was a B2 fracture. And it was probably loose. Okay. It was probably loose to me. And uh, right. probably uh, if there is some subtle subsidence or movement, it usually goes to retroversion. And yeah. uh, that might have helped uh, this lady to dislocate with a blunt trauma because she was stable before this, this That's uh, the fracture. Point. That's the point. That's the point. Even if we don't see a subsidence, because don't, we don't see yet at least, not clearly, in my opinion here, you can have a malrotation, and even if the fracture heals, we see dislocation in such cases. Subsidence for sure is reason, but also because of malunion or malrotation of the stem. Thank you. I but, agree strongly with your comment. But for so sure, something, something is happening. Uh, two months later, she appeared to have uh, thigh pain and knee pain that she didn't have before. This came along with uh, multiple visits to the emergency service. These are the, the new x-rays with uh, this new line. Non-healing, it was healed, and this is a new partial uh, fracture on that uh, medial cortex over there. We have a bone scan showing that uh, there is increased uptake at the uh, bone stage with a hypermetabolic area kind of compatible with uh, component loosening at the diaphyseal and trochanteric areas. So for sure, that stem has moved. And uh, seven months later, this was managed conservatively because the patient could still walk and the, it was the same clinical patient that before, but a bit better. So a few months later, almost a year after that, she had a new visit to the emergency service and these are the x-rays, which have apparently changed massively. It's and no more, dislocation uh, anymore at this moment. No new dislocations, but the subsidence is uh, quite notorious, quite obvious here. Uh, that uh, fracture line or kind of uh, loosened line on the medial cortex is still uh, uh, it's more evident over there, but the stem is clearly loose and the patient has pain. Uh, I'm not pretty sure why uh, was a CT scan ordered uh, at that time, but you can see almost the stem uh, trying to pull out a weight from the from the femur, the distal well, aspect. And Pablo, it makes sense if if you are planning a revision, you want to know where the cement is, where the situation is, if there is how is the healing of the fracture. A CT scan makes sense, in my opinion here. So uh, we have a second question. Up to now, what would be your treatment? Would you manage this conservatively? Revision osteosynthesis, revision with impaction bone grafting technique, revision with a long cemented stem, but without bone grafting, or go for a distal fixation. Some points to take into account. I mean, the, the stem is clearly loose and we have a, head, a femoral head size of 28. Will you change the cup as well? If a revision is indicated, not, not not if you're doing a revision of synthesis, of course. So let's see what the chart comes out. 
Can you give us the results? I think in the interest of time, we can move forward and wait for the, wait for the poll. Luigi? Oh, the poll. No, we don't have the results of the poll. We can. Okay. Conservative, 7%. The revision of the synthesis, 7%. Revision with impassion grafting, 0%. Sorry, guys. Revision with log cement stem, 40%. And revision with cementless distal fixation, 47%. So half and half, long cement stem and the distal fixation stem. I, I assume a Wagner type stem. Okay, so Pablo, that, what you did? So this was, was done. Uh, the cement was removed over, over the top without the need uh, of a femoral window or femoral osteotomy. It was uh, removable easily from the top with uh, special osteotomes or special devices to, to take the cement out. So and, the cement uh, the was loose? The cement was loose? No, no, it was partially loose. Some of the, okay. the, the lateral cortex was loose, but the medial side was not loose. And the fracture uh, was healed? The fracture was healed. Okay, fine. The fracture was healed. And the cup was also revised to increase the femoral head size just to... Uh, How was the stem? It was subsided and retroverted and completely unstable? It was completely subsided, virus, and retroverted. Okay. So there was a mixture of... Uh, uh, rotational and uh, length uh, uh, components around. Why did you leave the, the plate? So the plate, I, I'm not sure if I showed the complete uh, femoral uh, no. the, the telemetry, uh, femur x-ray, but the, the patient had a, a bilateral total knee replacement. Okay. So, so there was a total knee replacement. Uh, so the, the, the plate was left there. I'm not sure if you can see the total knee there. Yes, we but, can. We uh, can. We can see. We can see. So which was the reason for leaving the plate? The reason for leaving the plate was, I mean, this is a patient that clearly has a flare for periprosthetic fractures or for okay. loosening or for, uh, I mean, she's a, a osteoporotic, uh, now about uh, 85, 87 year old lady. And if you remove that plate, probably she might have an interprosthetic fracture and you would try to avoid that. But this plate but, protect you from this? It's fixed just distally. Yes, that is a problem. That is a problem. So the problem here comes with the next x-ray. So the patient did oh. well for, for five years. And in July, uh, when the pandemic was finishing, she had a new trauma. But at least she did well for five years. And she fell from a standing height. <laughs> She's Highlander. She's now 90 years old, and she has this situation. That's a very nice uh, right. comment, the one that you made, Dr. Zagra, considering that, that, that no uh, screws or cables were used uh, at the proximal level when the revision was done. I feel that was a problem. That might have been the problem here. So, And, and also the distal screw connect as, as a... a, 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 a stress riser. You see that the fracture starts from there. The fracture clearly starts at the level of the distal screw. Correct. Uh, this is the CT scan that was ordered probably to see if the distal fixation was actually fixed or loose, which is kind of the question here. Uh, I, I was pretty much okay with the x-ray, but uh, the CT scan is all, all, always performed here at our institution. And my question now is, again, what would be the treatment, conservative management, impaction bone grafting, or a cemented stem, revision of osteosynthesis, cementless distal fixation with a longer stem than the previous one, or go for a total femoral replacement? Some points that I have uh, raised over there is, is it this loose or fixed? I mean, the, the ZMR, the, the simmer biomed stem, is it a B2 or a B1 fracture? I would classify this as a type D, interprosthetic fracture dividing implants, but you have to say if it is B1, B2, or C for the femur, B1, B2 for the hip, B1, B2, or C for the knee. I think we can go on because time is, is, is running. We have some pressure. Was the stem stable or not? This, this is the important thing. Is it a B1 so for the femur or not? So to me, it was B1 for the femur. It was C. For the knee, the stem was fixed. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if we have the results of the poll over there, but uh, what I decided to do is uh, to do a revision of geosynthesis. I, I reduced the fracture. I included uh, uh, an extra orthogonal perpendicular plate at the distal area, going trying to get at least uh, six cortices proximal and distal to the fracture. As there were no room for screws, I tried to use cables at the diaphyseal area. And I included more uh, screws at the proximal area of the uh, uh, trochanteric um, area of the of the femur, and this is the uh, intraoperative image. And well, the did results. you test it in any way the stem? No, you assumed no. that the stem was stable. I assumed the stem was stable. I didn't op I didn't open up the joint this time. I didn't open okay. up the joint. Uh, and this is the X-ray. I agree. And this is uh, the patient at the last visit. Surprisingly, uh, with no new falls, one, one year after this, and wow, she's complaining. She's, she's, she's one under now. A bit. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's still she's almost ninety one. She's complaining a bit of uh, leg length discrepancy, unbelievable. Oh, but she's complaining about uh, five five millimeters uh, discrepancy on the right side. But uh, maybe she's an Argentinian dancer. Maybe <laughs> I'm not sure if she. Likes okay, that, let's so let's go to the. She has message. an Asian surname, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's see that your take-home messages, because that's clear here that the stem is not stable. You have to revise first situation. The stem is stable. Yes. Second situation, you have to fix completely different scenarios. Yes. So I mean, the Vancouver or UCS classifications are reproducible. Just follow the rules whenever possible. There are grays in the middle. Of course, we have sometimes patients with are almost. Uh, uh, in their uh, the last part of their lives or even dying. So we have to adjust our indication for each patient. If you have a type D fracture, always try to separate if it is V1, 2, or C at the THA and TKA level. If osteosynthesis, I would always suggest to span the whole femur to avoid inter interprosthetic fractures in case of total hips and total knees done at the same time. I would suggest using similar number of screws or cables proximal or uh, and distal to a fracture line always. And if there is no room for screws, I would encourage the use of uh, wires or cables. So these are Thank my you, messages. Pablo. Great case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. It was great. Thank you so much. Uh, the three cases and the three facilitators were great. They don't fight very hard, but was okay. I mean, it was a very nice discussion. So let's go with Satis for the final uh, take home messages from these three cases. And, and I will close in one minute. So thank you so much for keeping on time. And uh, we are we are just in this one hour webinar. Please, Satis, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Oliver. It's, in, it's uh, interesting, the, the challenge and trying to keep to time with uh, such an amount of time required for discussion. So let's go back to what we learned from this webinar. And there's certainly a lot of learning for all of us uh, and those who are listening. Uh, as with any case, what's important is we need to restore hip biomechanics with the first case that Renal presented. Always look for abductor deficiency. And uh, he was quite lucky in the fact that this patient had multiple operations to the posterior approach. So a fair amount of the abductors were, were indeed intact. But do think whether you need more constraint. Uh, and at the time of the operation, he left the, uh, the stem in, and there's something you need to think whether we should you revise the stem to at that point. And it's, if you have access, and if you think custom flange is an option, but remember that's useful in extensive bone loss. Um, in terms of the, I'm going forward. Uh, case two, uh, in terms of the infection, again, as we've always learned, every loosening suspect infection, you need an accurate diagnosis. You need to get the, the bug which is causing the problem. Uh, so identify the germ, discontinue antibiotics. The bone defect is often way worse than what you see. Uh, and often, as uh, was been pointed out, that this is going to be like tumor surgery. And always uh, be prepared for complications in the OR, as we've seen from that case. And finally, from the uh, periposthetic uh, case, uh, the classification is quite re reproducible, as we've learned from uh, from that case and also from published literature. Uh, and it's important to separate it from B1, B2, C, uh, or uh, above the hip and above the knee. And um, as, as Pablo has said, always try to span the femur. Similar amount of uh, metalwork proximally and distally to the fracture line. And if there are no room for screws, use wires or cables. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Satish. Uh, yes, say thank you to everyone. Thank you to the more than 400 people from the audience that stay in this webinar um, a lot that we'll see uh, on demand later on. Uh, thank you from the West to the East. Thank you, Pablo. Congratulations for the World Championship and for the presentation. You are great. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Thank you for all your time. I know you are recovering from this uh, mild surgery, so please get ready for the next webinar. Thank you for the people from Europe. Thorsten, thank you so much. It was a great pleasure again to stay with you. Thank you for your comments. Fares, great, as always. Thank you so much. Very gentle. Luigi, a pleasure. I'm sorry your team was not in the World Championship, but don't worry, next time. And uh, from the West, Milan, thank you so much. And good night to all the Indian uh, followers of our webinar. And Sadis, my pleasure, as always. Thank you so much for all your support in that um, webinar. Thank you so much, Sikot. Thank you so much, Sufian, for all the, your logistic stuff. And I hope to see you next webinar, next HIP webinar, next month, Saturday 18, and in March with the preserving surgery. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. It's bye an bye. honor. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.